God, a divine revelation that came from the Holy Spirit through the instrument of man to you and me. It is a divine book. It is not a human book. We oftentimes treat it as a human book, but I tell you something very remarkable. When the devil is in control, the first thing he wants to destroy is the Bible. Now, if it's a dead book, why do you want to hit the dead? When communism came into power, it felt its greatest enemy was the Bible. And they spent hundreds of millions of dollars trying to destroy the Word of God. Communism is dead and there are millions of Bibles floating all through what used to be the USSR. Give the Lord a hand. One of the unique subjects of the Word of God is the study of angels. Uh, we began uh, on page four uh, in, our last, in our last study telling you that the Hebrew word for angel is mulak and that it means one who is dispatched that means one who is sent as a deputy or an ambassador is called a melak and in the Greek language of yesterday there's the word angelos uh, which is used more common and is still used among the Greek people. Their families named the Angelo family and so forth. And it, it means, uh, uh, it's translated in our translation, angel, and refers to one who brings good tidings, <laughs> of which all of you are angels. Good tidings, folks. We'd like, to, <laughs> we'd like to have a lot of it. There's so many bearers of uh, negative it's just good to have some bearing the positive. Now, on, on page five, we begin our lesson today. Uh, I'm sorry we took so long with that front page uh, in our last lesson, but we might do better this time. I don't know. At the top of the page, it tells us that all cultures on this planet believe in invisible persons. Now, the, the reason for that is that it is inherent in the human person to know there's something outside of them that lives and that has strength and that can either hurt them or help them. Now, that is universal. Uh, when the uh, white man first came to this continent, uh, the, the Indians had many beliefs in the supernatural and, uh, and, and, and also life beyond that there was a happy hunting ground out there beyond this life. And, and so uh, we didn't have to teach them that there was a hereafter. They already taught it to generation after generation. Uh, I was away up in the far, far north of Alaska, and I saw one of their totem poles that had some black marks on it. And up at the top, they had a bear. So I asked one of the Eskimos, I said, uh, what does this pole mean here? It was a tree about this big around. And they had engraved the, the footprints of a bear, and the bear was on top. And I said, well, what does this one mean? And he said, well, I tell you, a long, long time ago, so far back until it's all in our tradition, the, the earth was covered with water. I said, really? Now, how did you find that out? Oh, well, he says, it's a, it's, a, it's a tradition of the Eskimos. Well, I said, what does a bear have to do with it? He says, that bear led our forefathers to safety. They climbed a tree, and the bear showed them the way to do it. Oh, I said, that's a bear story, isn't it? I said, now let me tell you the true story of it. There was a man named Noah. <laughs> amen. Amen. You believe it? Say amen. amen. But the, the, the word of God is so strong and so powerful that wherever there is an intellect, there's an understanding that there is something greater than the human person himself. And so that, that, that's your, 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 your top point there, number three. And it doesn't matter where you go. 
on this planet, and I've lived in 110 nations, and I've gone to the, to the t tribes of Tibet, and I've lived in the jungles of South America for five months at a shot, uh, just uh, visiting primitive tribal people, and have never found any people on the face of the earth who did not believe they were supernatural, the other side of their natural sight. And uh, I'm sure that if you could get people to think and to talk, everyone would admit it, you know. Most those that don't admit it are, are those who put the shade down deliberately, so that they won't be able to see it. Uh, so they they are good and bad, and uh, some are, are mystic, like the one with the bear story, and and some are very real, like the stories of angels in the Word of God. Uh, they are very real. Now we believe, I believe, that in these last days. There's going to be a, a greater appearance and function and operation of angels than ever before. Now, when God does something very remarkable, like in the birth of Jesus and during his life and, and his going to heaven, see, an angel started the story of Jesus. An angel appeared unto Mary and said, Hail, you shall give birth to a child without a man's help. You should be overwhelmed by the Holy Spirit. An angel started that story. And it was an angel that terminated the story. He looked down and said, Ye, you, you, you men of Galilee, that was the eleven apostles, so said, you men of Galilee, why stand you here gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus that you have seen go away shall so come in like manner. So his story ends with an angel. Now, if, if he, and all, and all through it are angels. So, if, if you uh, are going to believe the story of Jesus, you're going to believe in angels. Amen. Or otherwise, you do not believe the greatest story ever told, which is the story of the Lord Jesus Christ, our, our Savior. Point number four. <clears throat> there, there, there are more references in the Bible to angels than there are to devils. I think that is very significant that positive... The positive must always be stronger than than than, uh, than the negative. Uh, if you don't have more police in this city than you do criminals, the criminals will rule the city. So the positive has to overwhelm the negative. And and it, uh, in all of nature, it is the same. In all of uh, society, it's the same. The negative cannot overwhelm the positive, or that which is good ceases to be. In the Bible, much more is told us about angelic operations and functions than there is about demon forces, demon powers, and demon operations. Now, to me, that is a very wonderful thing. Uh, on, on the road where I go from day to day, people say, do you teach your people about devils? And I look and I think, I said, no, 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 let's see. <laughs> I don't know. I've forgotten. But I said, I know one thing. In a, in a Sunday school class like this, you see, you wouldn't be here if I was going to talk about devils every Sunday morning. You say, listen, we, we got enough on devils to so talk about something else a while. You cannot dwell upon the negative and bring positive results, you see. You have to dwell on the positive to get positive results. And so anybody that takes any kind of a thing and you just run it into the ground, you finally, you finally kill your audience, you know. You just destroy them. Now, when it's, when it's necessary to speak on the negative, we'll do it, just like Jesus did. Jesus never one time went around looking for a demon-possessed demon -possessed person. They had to come to him. They had to come to him. They had to come to him. You see. And, and, and so when they came to him, he delivered them, went right ahead as if nothing had happened. Boop. It's all finished, you see. You see, what does it mean? It means that all of us should be able to cast out evil and not even brag about it. Amen. Not even say, look at me, what I can do. It should be such a regular thing that when we face evil, we say, come out. And that person is set free. Because the positive is so strong, evil cannot stand up against it. I had a pastor who boasted that three 
uh, witches came to his church on a regular basis. And I spoke right up and I said, you know what? <laughs> They'd come to my church at one time. And one of two things had happened. They'd never be a witch again or they'd never be back again. One or the other. Yeah. Because the positive is so strong that when we come with the blood of Jesus Christ, if there's evil there, it rises up. I heard a real funny thing one time. Uh, some rowdies came and sat on the front seat right down there. And especially two of them. The boy was just boiling with hate inside and anger. And the girl was nudging him on. And I was sitting right behind him. They were strangers. They didn't, they didn't, they didn't know who I was. And, and finally, we all stood up and began to praise the Lord, and they went running out. And one of the ushers heard her say, Well, why didn't you do something? He said, I couldn't. There were too many of them. <laughs> yeah, they, were, they thought they could come to a place like this and destroy it, you see. And when they got there, they found too many good folks. The positive will overwhelm the negative every time. Put it into action, and it works. And all the people said, uh, it is the obligation and privilege of every modern Christian to, to use and to understand the use and the ministry of angels. Of course there is. Unfortunately, the study of angels, of, of angelology, may be the most neglected branch of religious science. Now that could be true, although I believe in our moment right now, in the last few years, there have been more. I know one thing, and I'm going to hope to get to that in these lessons here, that unconverted man has played with men from outer space and UFOs and all this business in the last 15 or 20 years, conjuring up all the demon power that he possibly can. That we, that, that, that the negative has done a thousand times more in revealing its negative attitudes and so forth than God's people have. We have not preached angels as much as they preach the devil, is what I'm telling you. Every movie they put out there has some kind of devil in it. Spiritism parades itself. Read your Saturday newspaper and see the, and see the places that announce meetings on Sunday for you. And, 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 uh, and, and, and possibly the church, uh, the good people, have not spoken regarding angels sufficiently. And so what we need to do is to accelerate the good and to put down the bad. We need to get going with that which is positive. And all the people said, let it be. Number five, an, 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 an exciting world of life and spirit surrounds human beings. Now, uh, um, that, that comes into an area of faith, you know, of faith. I am very conscious of, of, of spirit beings. You say, have you ever seen an angel? No. I haven't really wanted to. I haven't had no purpose for it, you see. If God wants an angel to appear to me where I, my, my natural eyes see them. But I know one thing. God has done miracles that took an angel to do it. We were traveling down a road in Tibet a number of years ago. And we got to a, a, a mountain right here, and there was a left-hand road and a right-hand road coming to the same town on the other side. The muleteer, who was in charge of the mule, said, uh, sir, which way you want to go? So they both lead to the same place over there, either left or right. Which way would you go? I says, I'll take the right route. It was a stupid thing to ask me. I'd never been there before. Why, why would I know which road was right? <laughs> but we, all of it, we had 17 mules in our caravan, so we went around the right-hand road. And then when we got over the other side, the, the people were standing at the gate and said, how, how, how did you get here? Well, I said, we took the right-hand road. Oh, is that it? He says, everybody that took the left-hand road died. They were shot by, by these brigands. 
everyone that took that left-hand road died. Well, we didn't know. The driver, the, the muleteer, he didn't know. We were passing through that area, you see. We didn't know there was a, a gang of men that had left the army were out there killing and shooting and doing all that they could, you know, you know to destroy. We didn't know they were there, but evidently the angels knew because they guided us around, around the other side. And when we got to the village, they said, which road did you take to come around here? And we said, the right-hand road. It says, if you're taking the right hand, left-hand road, nobody has come through today on the left-hand side. Of course, up in that part of the world at that time, they had no roads. You just had mule trails. And you followed the mule trails wherever, from town to town and, and, and village and village to, and village, to uh, village. But what God would like for us to come to, to understand that we're surrounded by these persons, th these persons. And maybe it would take a long time for us to uh, go through the total world of, word of God, you see, and, and show it to you. H how would you be if you were a, a woman crying and an angel appears to you and, and says, you're going to have a son? And you, you run and tell your husband, I just saw an angel, and he said, I was going to have a son. And that husband said, I won't believe it till, he talk, till I see him too. So she took him out, and he saw the angel. And then to the amazement of both of them, they built an offering unto God there, because it was a supernatural phenomenon. This is from the Word of God, you see. And he went back up to heaven in the fire, like this. And back up to heaven in the fire. Well, you, you, you say that was in the olden days. I'm just beginning to tell you here that in the last days, we're going to have more spiritual phenomena than the world has ever had before. But if we're not ready for it, and if we don't understand, then we won't be able to participate in a proper manner. Uh, we have to participate in faith. We have to know the difference between that which is evil and that which is good. We have to know how to listen and how to obey because when you get into areas like this you don't do as you please you do what you're told to do if you don't do what you're told to do it don't work you see and a disobedient person can't get in on this or nor a rebellious person cannot get in on this and so we have to condition ourselves our natural man to move into that spiritual person and when we do it works and all the people said the Bible is the only original and accurate book on this subject that we're talking about. The Bible stands or fails on the validity of this topic. It must be true. There are nearly 300 references to all kinds of spirit persons and angelic activity in the Bible. So you'd have to jerk out more than 300 references in order to take angel activity out of the Word of God. Well, we're not going to take a pair of scissors and cut up the book. Uh, we wouldn't have much book left if we go through snipping out all the parts that we say, well, I don't want to be in this, I don't want to be in that. It, the book is God's book. It is a book of information, and it's a book of blessing. And you and I are going to live by the book. <laughs> we're going to live by the book. And, and that's the way that God would have us to live. Uh, your, your point number six says, in society, uh, there is profound ignorance of angels. You say, now, why would that be? Well, uh, the, the, the greatest reason is the materialistic world that you live in. Our, our foreparents were very, were much more uh, understanding of spiritual phenomena than this generation is. Now you go to primitive places of the world. Uh, they haven't been taught about Jesus yet. They haven't been taught about the Bible yet. But when it comes to demon forces, they're very well educated. They pass it on from generation to generation. And they spend a lot of time in that type of worship. In that type of worship. And so they, they know demon power. They know uh, fallen angels when nobody's taught them about the good angels, the angels of God. But if you're going to be overwhelmed or working on a car all day, you're not going to see an angel. Are you here? 
You say, well, your hands are full of mud and, and your, your brain is full of it too. You just stuck there with it and worked on it all day long, all day long. And you don't have a resting place for the Spirit of God. It takes quietness. It takes seeking. It takes reaching. It takes reading for us to come to an understanding of what all God wants to do for us today. And the reason why we want to study a book like the one about angels, I, I believe with my total being that there's going to be so much of it that we might miss some of the good things that God has prepared in these last days. As he was around about Jesus, they are going to be around about his church at the time of his reappearing of the time of the rapture of the body of Christ. And if this be so, then you and I should come to understand everything the Bible says about it, both positive and negative. We should understand that there is a world. Now, I know what you're, you're going back to UFOs, I can just tell it, you know, and, and outer world creatures and little green men. Uh, there, there, there can be demonic manifestations. You say, but that might be of God. If it's not in the Word, and if it doesn't bless the church, it's not of God. You see. You say, but do you believe they exist? I have no knowledge of it at all. There's been no little green men around my house yet. And if they do, I'll capture him and bring him to church. <laughs> I'll let you have a look at him, you see. If it's a demon force, he will melt away and be gone, of course. One, one thing I must state here so very strong is, uh, you say, I'm, I'm getting scared. Uh, fear has no place for what God does. There's not one place in the Bible where God says fear demons or fear angels. The Bible says we can command angels. I doubt there's anybody here that's ever commanded one. Do you go do this, you go do that. The Bible says we should judge angels. This means they're under judgment. Some have been taken clear out of the operation. And Jesus had to go and preach to them, uh, the angels that were in prison, you see. And, and so... Uh, they are creatures with great understanding, but when they rebel, uh, then they are under divine judgment. And they are servants, our servants, and heaven's servants, of course. And uh, be because we haven't studied it, we haven't moved into it, then we don't have the proper understanding of it. But I believe we're ready for it, don't you? Amen. I believe that we are now ready to have a full comprehension of what God is doing around about us. Our natural eyes is not our strongest eyes. Our spiritual eyes are our strongest eyes. And we want God to open up the eyes of our spirit that we might see and understand the things that are certainly coming to pass in these last days. There might be many mysteries in these last days, but I want to assure you one thing. Christ is the master of all. When he rose from the dead, he said, all power in heaven and earth is given unto me. And he says, I have the keys of, of hell and death right here. Well, if, he, if, he's, if he's above and beyond all things, and he has power over every situation, and he belongs to us, we belong to him, we don't have any right to fear. But we do have a right to move in to that spiritual area, move into it. The time may come, and in, in this country, we'll have more opportunity to meditate, and more opportunity to, to read the Word. There are folks sitting here today, and thank God you're in church, but you hadn't picked up the Bible all week to read it. You say, why? I had you much work to do. Well, that's what I was telling you. We're so close to the mundane things of this world till we miss the supernatural things. And the time may come when we'll get back to seeking the supernatural. And when we do, it's going, to be a, it's going to be a greater life, a greater life. Can you say amen? amen? I'm putting my spirit out to God that whatever angels are supposed to, to do for me, put them to work. Let them do it. If they are the servants of the kingdom and if they are the servants of the, uh, of the body of Christ, let's give them the job to do. But you have to learn about it first. 
And that's what we're going to do in Jesus' name.